everyone. This is Sister Chanel, and today I wanted to talk about following the Bible literally. And I actually wanted to, you know, discuss some of my own very interesting experiences with my attempts to follow the Bible literally. And maybe also encourage you to post in the comments. I'd like to know, you know, maybe what some of your experiences have been as you've attempted to follow the Bible literally. And so you might ask, well, why would I want to follow the Bible literally? What does that even mean? Well, I think that the ultimate goal, and I think the Bible supports this, the ultimate goal for every Christian, every believer in, on the Lord Jesus Christ is intimacy with him. It's not, you know, heaven. It's not the new earth. It's not a mansion. It's not gifts. You know, all of those things are nice. You know, they're the cherry on top and, and they're nice additions. But Jesus is the prize. He's the gift. He's the goal. Intimacy with him. That's what every single one of us should be striving for. Exodus 33 verse 13, you know, Moses prayed. He said, now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. In Jeremiah 9 verses 23 and 24, it says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, and let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. And of course, you know, Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him. It's not just, you know, casual knowledge. Oh, I know, you know, the milkman or the post person in the post office, or I know, you know, this person or that person. It's intimately knowing someone the way a husband knows his wife, the way a wife knows her husband. It's that spiritual intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our ultimate goal. And how do you get that? What do you do? What is the secret formula to, you know, obtaining this beautiful intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the Bible actually gives us the formula. And it's actually, it's, it's not that hard in terms of figuring it out. Um, it says uh, in Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge 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 of him knowledge of god knowing him the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge okay so that's great so if i want to know the lord if i want that intimate knowledge of him i need the fear of the lord okay well that's you know kind of a uh, it's not quite clear what does that mean the fear of the lord well in proverbs 8 13 it says the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So we can put this almost in a formula. If I want to intimately know Jesus, if I want intimate knowledge of him, that requires the fear of the Lord and the fear of the Lord requires hating evil. So, you know, really when you, you start to really desire that incredible intimacy with the Lord Jesus, you have to start living holy and you have to really follow after holiness. It says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And hating evil, hating evil, hating the things that God hates. So as I've attempted to <laughs> apply this to my life, there have been a few scriptures that I've really kind of focused on. Um, one is Psalm 101 verse three. It says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. And the other one is Mark chapter four, verse 24. And he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto ye that hear shall more be given. And then finally, Ephesians chapter four, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
So we can, I mean, obviously, you know, holiness extends beyond just what we watch, what we listen to, and what we say. You know, we can talk about wardrobe. I mean, that's a big thing, especially with Christian women. <laughs> we can talk about wardrobe in, you know, other areas. But, you know, just focusing on those three right now. Um, so as I've attempted to apply these to my life, I've had some really, really interesting experiences. Um, so when you say, okay, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes, no wicked thing, that's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we have to learn to think the way that God thinks. And I think part of the problem is that very often we bring God down to our level. And the Bible is very clear. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. They are higher than our ways and our thoughts. And so we have to understand that even though we as humans might say, oh, you know, it's no big deal. Oh, that's not a big deal. You know, God doesn't necessarily think that. God doesn't necessarily feel that way. Which is why it's really important to make Bible study, knowing the entire counsel of God, um, studying the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, making sure that you understand uh, or you're familiar with the entire Bible, because that's the only way that we know what God values, what he considers okay. We understand his perceptions and not just secular human perception. So yeah, as I've attempted to, you know, set no wicked thing before mine eyes, I have found that watching television, watching apps, watching almost anything these days is like next to impossible. Like I would put a, a show on or a movie on and within a few minutes, the first few minutes, there's a cuss word. So I shut it off certainly movies that use God's name in vain and that's you know whether using GD you know God as a cuss word or just throwing Jesus's name around casually even I've noticed even movies or, or TV shows things that say things like holy crap or holy s word that is actually you know if you think all evil comes from Satan you know that's satanic the only thing that's holy is God so it when a person says holy crap or holy s word there's a deeper reason why satan devised that term it, it 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 means more than what you know people casually kind of toss it around even holy crud you know the only person that's holy is god and so when people say things like that it's actually it's actually you know somewhat blasphemous so yeah i mean i've i've found myself struggling to watch almost anything. Um, I'm one of those people, I, I need background noise. I like background noise when I'm going to sleep. I like background noise when I'm working. And, you know, not just like white noise or brown noise. Like I need usually something on, like a, a mindless TV show or whatever, just to kind of keep my mind a little bit relaxed and not kind of intense, you know, between work and school and, you know, my Bible study, my brain is always like in intense mode. So sometimes like when I would go to bed, I would watch, put on the honeymooners, just something silly and stupid to just kind of relax my brain. I don't, I tried listening to the Bible at night, but that was hard for me because I found myself trying to pay attention to it. So it actually made my brain stay awake rather than, you know, just going to sleep. So yeah, I needed just kind of mindless things, mindless entertainment. And I'm finding like almost nothing, even the honeymooners. I remember, you know, there was an episode where, you know, one of the male characters put on a dress and, you know, the Bible talks about that. <laughs> and so, you know, things like that, we kind of were okay with it. We kind of, as long as it's not pornographic and it's not, you know, some things are obviously like things you shouldn't watch, watching porn, watching, you know, movies with a cuss word every five seconds, you know, things like that. You're like, oh, okay, I would never watch that. But even a black and white show where a man puts on a dress, something like that. And, and the secular world would say, oh, that what's the big deal? It's not a big deal. I've actually even seen Christian shows with that type of thing. And that's what I mean. It's like the world thinks it's cute, it's funny, what's the big deal? 
But for a perfect and holy God, there is no such thing as cute sin. There's no such thing as bunny sin. God doesn't look at an abomination and say, oh, it's cute. What's the big deal? And that's the thing. We have to really start viewing sin the way that God does. Call it what it is. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not, oh, what's the big deal? It's sin. That's exactly what it is. And we need to start recognizing it as that and calling it that. Take heed what ye hear. You know, it's like the measure that ye meet, more shall be given to you. If you listen to God's word, if you listen to things that are holy and edifying, those will build you up. If you listen to things that are trash and impure, those things will tear you down. Um, I've found myself, you know, songs that I've listened to, even in my childhood, that were, they're kind of tame by today's standards. They're actually, quote unquote, not that bad by today's standards. But then when I listen to the lyrics and I actually pay attention to what's being said, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. I was thinking about the song, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? And by the Shirelles. And it, that's actually a 1960s song. So even music from 40, 50, 60 years ago, songs that, you know, by today's standards are very tame and nothing overly sexual um, when you actually listen to the content listen to the lyrics of what the person's singing about it'll be songs referencing fornication or other you know drug use or other things that are just ungodly uh, recently i had started um you know i don't hang out on instagram too much but every now and then i might you know if i'm at work and i've been working heads down for several hours straight i might you know click on instagram just to watch a cute little video or something funny just to give my brain a break for two or three minutes and i've been you know i listened to you know a guy he's a comedian and he did funny voiceovers uh, mostly of like silly things of people eating weird food or you know people throwing temper tantrums or things like that in public um so i thought his voiceovers were funny but some of his videos some of his uh clips did have profanity and you know i listened a little bit here and there and you know after a while i'm like okay this is not holy it's not pure i shouldn't be listening to this it's not something that the lord would be listening to and it's not something that he would be okay with and so you know i unfollowed and i stopped listening and and i'm really trying to really be more stringent and paying attention to the songs that I listen to and the, and the lyrical content. What is the person singing about? What are they talking about? Don't just get lost in a great beat, you know, and oh, the beat is so amazing or the melody is so amazing or the chorus is great. What is the lyrical content actually about? Is it content that's uplifting to the Lord or is it content that is glorifying behavior that he says is wicked and unholy? And finally, you know, in Ephesians talks about let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. No means none, no, communi no corrupt communication whatsoever. So, I mean, yeah, we can extend that to, you know, the obvious, which is, you know, cussing and things like that. But, you know, it's funny, the other day, uh, I think maybe a few weeks ago, I was, you know, I heads down, I was working on a big project at work. And this woman, she was actually a manager. I, I work remotely, so I was communicating with this woman um, in a chat. And I have a location online where I put all of my documents, all of a repository. So this is the one location where I put all of my documents. And this woman, she should have known that because I post to that page every few weeks. And I will post, you know, a link to the documents in a group chat. This happens every few weeks. So it's not like this is something new to her and she's never seen it and she shouldn't be aware of it. So, you know, I was working on this long project. It was exhausting. We were going back and forth. I had, you know, so many updates to make and this and that. And she was, you know, I think she was asking me for a bunch of annoying things and I had, she was really nitpicking and I had to keep, you know, changing things for her and I had to keep doing things to address her. And then finally I posted the completed project and she's like and where can i find it 
And I called her an idiot. And I, you know, to myself, I said, you know, freaking idiot or something along those lines. And of course, instantly I felt, you know, grieved and convicted. I knew the Holy Spirit was like, okay, that that's not cool. That's corrupt communication, calling someone an idiot. You know, it's people, you don't understand how they don't know something. I mean, it's like, okay, we've done this for six months, 12 months. How do you not know the location after 12 months when we, we post to this location every few weeks and we're talking about the link to this location every few weeks? How do you not know where to go? And But still, you know, the Lord is merciful. The Lord loves her. And for me to call her an idiot is just wrong and sinful. And I had to immediately repent and ask the Lord to forgive me. But even something like that, you know, it doesn't have to be major cuss words. It doesn't have to be, you know, sex talk. It could be something like that. Just losing your temper and calling someone a bad name. You know, even if you don't say it to their face, God knows I said it. Whether she knows it or not is not the point. God heard me say it and God knows I said it. So, you know, it's just, it's all of these little foxes that we have to be aware of, the little foxes that spoil the vine. And, you know, my mother and I, we were talking and we were discussing like why rejecting these things is so important. And I would say the main reason is because these things are sin and sin is what nailed Jesus to the cross. That's the reason he had to die. And if you think about it, how sick is it for us as Christians to take pleasure in what killed the person that we're supposed to love the most? Jesus is the person we're supposed to love more than anything. So how do we take pleasure in and enjoy the very sin that caused his death? How do we have fun with it and enjoy it and think it's cute? It cost him his life. God the Father had to sit there and watch his beloved prince, the, the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Almighty God, he had to watch him be slaughtered. And these are the things we find funny. And these are the things we find cute. And these are the things we find entertaining. The very things that sent him to the cross. Romans 1 discusses a whole myriad of ungodly behavior and sins. And at the very end in verse 32, it says, These people know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Are we watching actors commit fornication? Are we having pleasure, taking pleasure in watching sin, taking pleasure in hearing sin? Are we enjoying and being entertained by the things that kill the Lord? And think about that. And, and, and we say we love God. We say we love Jesus Christ. And yet we're entertained by the very sin that caused him to die. And that's sick. It's sick and it's weird and it's creepy. And I don't, we need to start looking at sin that way. That's how God looks at sin. It's the thing that killed his son. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. It's not, oh, what's the big deal? a perfect and holy God. It's sin. I was thinking a little while ago, um, you take like a, a pen or a pencil and you make one tiny little dot on a piece of paper. And let's say you took every piece of paper on the planet, literally, and just lined them all up into a big, gigantic, super gigantic square. You would not be able to even see that tiny little dot on one of those little pieces of paper if the whole rest of the paper is all placed together. And yet sin would be that one little tiny dot and it would still be unacceptable to God. That's how perfect and holy God is, which is why we can't be nonchalant about sin. We can't take it lightly. We can't find it cute. We can't find it funny. We shouldn't say no big deal. It is a big deal. And if we 
truly love the Lord Jesus and intimacy with him is our greatest desire and goal. We need to start scrutinizing everything we say, everything we watch, everything we do, everything we think. I mean, you know, I think the mind is something that, of course, you know, not sinning, you know, that may take time because you're, it's like you're unlearning behavior and certainly thoughts, you know, thinking, thinking no evil. That's another scripture we can talk about. Thinking no evil. Um, you have to cleanse your mind with God's word. And that could take time, you know, depending on how long you've been a Christian or how long you've been reading the Bible. Um, it may not come overnight, you know, as much as you you read the, read the Bible days and weeks and months and hopefully years, you know, your mind will start to get cleansed, especially if you're not filling it up with junk. But, you know, really scrutinizing all of the areas of our lives for ungodliness and for sin and unholy behavior and getting rid of it with the help of the Holy Spirit. We need God's word and we need the help of the Holy Spirit. But this, these need to be our goals if knowledge of him knowing Jesus intimately is truly what we desire. And, you know, it may lead to loneliness. It may lead to rejection. You sometimes may feel like you're walking this road alone because most people won't be following it that stringently. They won't, you know, they'll still watch all these shows and listen to secular music. People call themselves Christians. And so you may feel isolated. You may feel lonely, but, you know, is Jesus is worth it. Any silly, stupid, ridiculous sacrifices, you know, giving up a TV show, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, you know, giving up something on Instagram, it's not the end of the world. Those sacrifices are nothing compared to the joy of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope, you know, this is encouragement, you know, to, to really start thinking more deeply about what you put in front of you, what you listen to, the things you say, the things you think about, um, following hard after holiness, seeking Jesus, seeking his word, following the prize, pressing toward the mark for the prize. Jesus is the prize. We want this prize. And if you want this prize, this is what you have to do. So I hope this is encouraging. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know, like maybe some of the experiences that you've had, what have you struggled with? In terms of giving up, um, what have your experiences been? What alternatives have you found? Um, have you found other ways, you know, entertainment that is clean and that you feel, you know, you can enjoy without sinning, without indulging in sin or enjoying sin? So yeah, I would love to hear from you and please be encouraged and keep pressing on toward the prize. And God bless and I will talk to you soon.